What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? We're good. We're good. There we go. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. We're good. We're good. So funny. Yeah. We can do some good stuff. Guys, I just want to say, before we do anything, I want to thank the whole New Warrior Mall team for allowing yes, us to do sure. this. This is really thank cool. You. So, yeah, round of applause for them. Thank you. Thank you. What? No, no. And she goes, don't worry. My mom used to do that for me when I was a kid, too. Oh, shit. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I like the round of applause. That felt really good. It felt like I'm at home. It feels like I'm, I'm appreciated here on the You Should Know Podcast. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the You Should Know Podcast, season two, episode 35. Round of applause, please. I, okay, it, it didn't make too much sense. I thought I was going to get a second round of applause from the audience. Go ahead and hit it. Go ahead and hit Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Guys, welcome back to the You Should Know Podcast, Season 2, Episode 35. Boy, boy, oh boy, it's been a crazy couple weeks. We are fresh off of a live show. We did our first live show here in Dallas, Texas. We opened up for the new Rory and Maul podcast. We will talk about that with co-host Cam later. And I, hey, if this is your first time here, it was your first time seeing us at the live show in Dallas. Welcome to the family of the You Should Know podcast. I got a little thing to tell you, all right? If you're new here and you look below you and you see that subscribe button isn't pressed, you're wrong. If you look even more below that and you see that comment section isn't fulfilled with your name, guess what? Even more wrong. Go ahead and get your good karma. Fill that out right now. We got some announcements, announcements, announcements for this week's podcast. Black Friday is coming up. And guess what? You should know studios.com backslash shop. Our merch that you see all around us. If you're listening, you don't see it all around us, but you know what it looks like. We are doing a Black Friday sale. So on Black Friday, on what, what, what day is Thanksgiving? Thursday? That would make sense. So Thursday night. You're not going to know exactly what time it is. That means you got to... Be on the lookout on the website on youshinostudios.com backslash slap. It's in the description. You got to be on the lookout. Thanksgiving evening, we will have a promo code available for you. And the promo code will be right here on the screen. For the audio listeners, the promo code is Black Friday 10 Everybody gets the discount. You don't have to just be in the Discord. Everybody gets the discount. Black Friday 10 You don't know how long this promo code is going to be going. It might be 30 minutes. It might be two minutes, might be an hour and a half, might be 17 hours. You don't know. So you got to go to youshinostudios.com backslash shop and be on the lookout on Thanksgiving. Speaking of the merch, speaking of the merch and speaking of that merch, yeah, yeah. Speaking of the merch, that I hit that, didn't I? Low key, a little bit? No, not at all. Speaking of the merch, we, as you know, we are doing a giveaway for anybody that buys a piece of merch. We have four OG, you should know podcast shirts. This is our first a piece of merch we ever put out. And we only have four left. And it is signed by yours truly, me, and co-host Cam right there on the back. And we are giving this away, one away for the next four weeks, starting right now. Our first winner of the signed OG You Should Know Podcast merch is Morgan Gonzalez. Round of applause for Morgan. Morgan, this will be coming to you ASAP. It will just show up at your doorstep, and I hope you like it. So congrats to Morgan. We're also still doing the Manscaped. Let me grab it. The Manscaped Performance Package Giveaway, because our presenting sponsor is Manscaped, and they are so nice, and they love you all, and I love them, and they love us. And we're giving away Performance Package for everybody. Well, not for everybody. <laughs> that would be crazy. For uh, one person... With a $50 or above order, we're going to randomly select. And so we're still creating the pot for that. If you already have an order that's $50 or above, you're still entered to win. Hey, I know you see something on the set that might be a little peculiar, might be a little different. What are these balloons behind me? One of them's a little deflated. It's all right. They've been in here since the Pendegredio War of 1833. We hit 1 million followers on TikTok. Round of applause. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's so much in my brain right 
Yep, yep, it's still going. You done? All right. There's been so much happening the past like couple weeks. I can't even remember so many milestones. We had a million followers on TikTok. So thank you all that follow on TikTok. The link to everything is in the <clears throat> is in the description below. The P.O. Box if you want to send us stuff. The merch if you want to go buy some merch and enter for the giveaways. Black Friday discount. The Instagram is also below in the description. Everything you need, every question you ever have is in the description below. We have a great podcast today. We're going to do a recap of our Dallas live show. Maybe a little announcement. Maybe a little, little, little sneak peek of what we got coming in the future. And you know we got the stories coming. So... Thank you so much for joining this week's podcast. I tried to be so professional. I don't know why I keep trying to add new shit. This is not us. All right. See you in a little bit. This holiday season, I'll be giving thanks to our friends over at Manscaped. Everybody loves turkey and stuffing, but you'll be looking like dessert with the help of Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0. The leaders in Below the Waist Grooming have blessed you with the ultimate Thanksgiving dinner topic. Tell your in-laws about your new cutting-edge ball trimmer and gift yourself or the man in your life the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Trim your pumpkins by going to manscaped.com and use code PSH for free shipping and 20% off. I'm telling you, holidays are right around the corner. If you're a man, get this gift for yourself or get this for a man in your life. If you're a woman and you, have a, and you want to use this, go ahead and use it. Ain't no problem with that. Or if you have a man in your life, a dad, an uncle, a brother, a cousin, anybody, and you, it's hard to get gifts for men, I know. This is a gift that you give somebody and then six months down the line, they're like, hey, I want to let you know I'm still using that Manscaped gift you gave me. It is the perfect gift. So shout out to Manscaped and get 20% off and free shipping with code PSH at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code PSH. Be thankful this holiday season for the best gift of all for Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. Thank you, Manscaped. Now to the rest of the podcast. The You Should Know Podcast. All right. And, and step. And, and step. And, and step. And a twirl and drop. Hey. Oh my god, there's so much saliva in the mouth. We got calls, Cam! Back, Back in, in the, the building. building! Let's do it. Let's get hey it. Hey man. Pinkies. Yeah. Good to see you. It. If you haven't tried it, just do good a regular to, good handshake. To throw the pinky slot in there. It adds extra comfort. It's like a I still like a, don't it's like, like it. It's like a snuggie I for a handshake. I still don't like it. I still don't like it. It makes me feel like you're... I might trademark that. A snuggie for a handshake. It, well, you said it on a public platform. Well, it's mine. So if you steal it, I'm going to sue you. But, anyway. but you can't sue somebody for something you don't technically own. Well, that's why I said I'm going to do it. In, so le in legality, I'm you don't gonna own it. I'm going to get a patent on it. How are you feeling, man? Dude. Very, very good. Very it was, good. It was amazing. The live show was just amazing. Again, he already said in the intro, but again, shout out to the whole new Rory and Mall crew, everyone from obviously Rory, Mall, uh, Julian, Julian Peach. Peach, like everybody. They were just all so welcoming, giving insight. Uh, some knew a little bit about us, some didn't, but they were still like just showing respect and giving us praise and like, dude, y'all are doing your shit. Like, just keep it up and we, it was just amazing to hear from someone that was one a huge inspiration facts two that's at a level that we aspire to be at facts and three that it's like i just realized i did one <laughs> two and three I, I didn't realize until my three was at the four that's bad well, yeah we're still coming off that we're adrenaline gonna, dump blah, 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 blah. one two and three that their stuff is very like funny and very, very well thought out and done as well. And it was just, it was great to see everything. It was great to be a part of it. What are you laughing at? Look how dirty my eyes. God, is that, oh my God, that's the one that was on your bed. You dingy, you sicko. His socks, y'all can't see it. His socks are like, you washed them in like mud water. Like, they're like brown. They're just dinged. Like, look at the shoe and then look at this. That is, they're both supposed to be white. One's whitish and one is just, Oh my God, that's bad, bro. Like that's that's why you just ankle sock. It's cold, bro. I need like a little foot snuggie. Okay, see snuggie. That's there you go. In your mind, but uh, but no, for real, it was amazing. It was awesome. Yes. What were you about to say? I don't know, but um, it happens to you a little too frequently. Congratulations on a million followers on TikTok. We did it. We did it. Yeah, it's deflated. It is. Yeah. It's, it's, Here, put it there. Let's put it there. We did that in the live show. We did. 
let's talk about because it happened kind of fast, and so people are like live show. I, thought, I didn't even know y'all were doing a live show. Yeah, so, yeah, a couple of y'all uh, DM'd me. I'm sure you got some of the yeah. same ones too. But they're like, w "What's the tour info? Like, please let me know." Yes, it's like, bro. We, it's, it's no tour, not yet, yet, yet. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> ooh. Ooh. Ooh, 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 yet. That'll be uh, future, hopefully sooner than later. But um, yeah, we. Yeah, uh, it was it was awesome, and the reason it was so. We would have loved for much more of y'all, the family, to have been able to be there. But the way they set up the whole thing, like it was a poll and whatnot, and we we didn't get full confirmation like a, that it was happening until like Thursday night. Yeah, and, and the, the show thing was Saturday, Saturday night. Tickets have already been sold for months in advance, so it was a. Uh, well, the thing is, it we. We didn't get confirmation. We didn't get confirmation until Thursday. Yeah. The general public didn't get to know until Friday. Yeah, yeah, so we exactly. couldn't even say anything. Exactly. We got confirmed Fr Thursday night that we won. We have the opening um, bit. And then they didn't put out the new flyer and everything announcing it that we won until Friday. And then the show was Saturday. And like I said, they, I mean, with running. the tour, they've already been on the tour for over a month. And it's uh, you're picking your nose with a shirt. What's going on? Are you a grown man? Is there or are you face? an adolescent? Is there anything on my face? You're going to pick your nose, then scratch your eye. You're the reason people get sick. You're not the reason you get sick. You're the reason I others pay, I get sick. I wipe my nose with my shirt. Anyway. Oh, whatever. There's a dime with a, with a stick. I, with a, I was been, I've been looking at it like <laughs> we are off the road. So let's explain how this happened. So if you don't know, New Roaring Mall, uh, Roaring Mall are podcasters. They've been doing this since 2014. They used to be on the Joe Budden podcast until they created their own. So shout out to them and how they were able to pivot. But uh, they were one of the first podcasts that I, I fell in love with. And it inspired me to start this podcast three years ago. And I've been watching them. You're right. yeah, I've, just, I've, I've been watching them my spot. religiously since like 2016 and it's now 2022 about to be 2023 so like every week I listen to them since I was a child and um they announced on their tour what they do is they have opening acts of like local podcasts from that city uh wherever they're going and what they do is they post on their Instagram they're like tag your favorite podcast from the city we're about to be in and we'll pick them to open up for us so I, I didn't even see that they posted the Dallas show for them to enter to po to tag their favorite podcast. A fan sent it to me. I put it in the Discord. Now, I want to say something. I got to be careful with my words here because I do love the Discord family. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the Discord family. They're, but the Discord is <laughs> to a point. Yeah. I want to say there's so many people, and thank you to everybody that's in the Discord. You can still join the Discord, but it's gotten to a point where Please I don't, do. I don't even know if majority of those people are in the Discord because they like the podcast. Yeah, I'm not convinced. Yeah, it's like, do you even like the You Should Know podcast? We love that you're in there by all means, but there's just so much going on in there at every waking second of every day, which is again great. Fantastic. We love that. We love it, but it just. It's one of those things that it like grew quicker than we expected, and now it's just like, huh, 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 yeah, huh. it's like it's, and I love that yeah. they're forming relationships and they have common interests on things. But I, what, ideally, what we would like is when we announce something or we're trying to put something in there, everything kind of <laughs> comes to everybody joins together on oh, that. Wait, we're in the you, you should, should know, know podcast, podcast Discord. Discord. <laughs> Let's go vote them in. And but. so I know there's a couple, uh, and there's a a, a, a girl. Who, I, I forgot her name and I've, it's like Beach Hill or something like that mm -hmm. she's great and, and and there's a lot of people there's like a core group and like whenever we do post something I know who's gonna respond to it so shout out to everybody that came from the discord and tagged us in there and uh, we ended up winning so we, we got that I was very excited um so this is all really fast. We've never done a live show before. We didn't never. know we didn't know like this is new territory to us. and it's for people that we like like literally my idols in this podcasting shit so it's like a lot's happening at one time and like 48 hour noticed like to where when we okay that's like you're scratching your eyes now you're digging in your ears <laughs> oh the reverb at the very end of that it was like oh my sick. throat is just bro allergies is bad out here yeah but no it was it was just it was very um, quick again. Wah! Stop. <laughs> Stop. Wah! 
so sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry. Go ahead. I'm so sorry. No, nope. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was very quick again, and we uh, like we knew like oh we have a chance we have a chance so we started thinking about what we're gonna do and just how to in, like interact with the audience. And another thing is, like funny is funny to most people, but there is obviously a million different senses of humor. Right. So demographics are different. The demographic was definitely different than what we are used to, but we just went out with the confidence that, I mean, we know what we do. We know what we're about. We're not going to change it. And hopefully they enjoy it. And it was just phenomenal. Like it, we didn't know what to experience. Of course there was butterflies and, and yeah. Nerves. let's not jump too far. Let's not jump too far. I want to get the whole preparation day before into the green room and then right. onto the stage. So preparation, me and Cameron like, Shit, we got to figure out a show. We have 20 minutes in front of a live audience, which we're assuming majority of people, maybe they've seen us before and they like the familiar faces, but they don't know what we're about. Yeah. And so we're like, okay, what are we going to do? We got, should we tell like a story, this story? So we ended up coming up with a show, right? We had a whole layout for a show. Now it's time to practice it. We got to, when was the first time we practiced? Friday night at midnight. <laughs> It's a day Friday before at midnight, show. and we're performing Saturday at seven, but it got pushed to it's eight, eight fifteen ish. Yeah, but I mean, we were already there. It's not like we were practicing what we were already there in the environment. But yeah, the first time we practiced it was Friday, literally at midnight. So technically, the day the, of. the day of the show. So we practiced. The first practice went fairly it was well. It was good. Fairly well. Then, fast forward to. Hours before the show, before we go to the venue, we come to the studio, right? We come right here. We go over to the photography section and we're like, let's grab fake mics and let's go run through the show. This is when panic started to ensue inside of my body. I was like, yeah. this cool, calm and collected guy, right? <laughs> yeah, no. This guy, we go over there and I'm like, hey, we need to start putting a time on it. So, like you said, we had 20 to 25 minutes. Like 25 was the absolute cut off. off. So I'm like, hey, we need, to, we need to time it too. Like, I know we have enough, but we need to start timing it to see. So we go through the first run through. It was like 27 and a half, 28 minutes. I was like, ah, we should probably shave that last part off. He was like, yeah, we definitely need to do that. So we shave that off. But that even the, tw the 28 minute run through, our first practice here, the day of, was like flawless. Perfect. Like, we were like, oh, we're about, to, yeah. we're about to kill this. This is going to be great. So then, for whatever reason, it's always easy to shave stuff off, yeah. but like when you add stuff on, that's hard, but we're shaving off. So it's simple. Like we just take what we did, killed it, shave it off. So I'm like, okay, we, we got to get rid of something. That was yeah. over time. So we talk about what we're getting rid of and we go again. And this man, like for no, like there's no one here. I'm like, dude, there's about to be like a couple hundred. hundreds. Yeah, like, yeah. And there's no one here. And he's just like, Hey, everybody, welcome. <laughs> like, there's a couple mess ups that were like 30 seconds in. And then I'm like, okay, that's nothing. Let's go back out. Oh, you should know pod. Click the time. We get like five minutes in. And he's just like, hey, there's a bar. bar spot. And I'm like, what are you, are you okay? Like, what's going on? You can't, you cannot hold on me now. I have your back. You have mine. And honestly, dude, that is like a quick side note to like hit the heart for anybody of you doing anything. Get you a partner in crime. Because yeah. it's like, that is just, that was like our motto of going up there. It was like, dude, even if they boo us off the stage and they hate every second of it, like, we're you gonna got be, my back, yeah. I got yours, we're golden. So whatever you're doing, have an accountability partner. Back to practicing. So we go through it. He finally gets his couple mess ups. And of course, I start giving him crap for it. So of course, instant karma happens. I have a couple mess ups. Yeah. But we finally get uh, a really solid one. It was like right at 21 minutes. We were like, okay, we were just, you know, saying a little too much stuff, whatever. Uh, but it was perfect. We sit down, we rest, and we do like two more before we head out. And we felt pretty confident. Like, it was pretty good. It got to a point, though, whenever we were doing the run-throughs where I'd mess up, yeah, I would stutter. Like, everybody that watches the podcast, you know I have a stuttering problem analyst. The fact that... <laughs> <laughs> so, you should know studios. You should know stutter. Okay, yeah, shout out to him. Shout who, out to that. Who made a song. fucking made a a diss the, like, track on It was me. like a diss slash <laughs> Like, love, yeah. He's a fan. Like, he's cool. We met him at DreamCon. He's a dope. cool dude. But, uh... He met, basically, if you haven't seen it, he made a whole beat out of his stutter when that went viral, when he had the coffee, when he went, D -d 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 -d. Yeah. and he like, he literally made that, like the drums threw like a melody behind it. And then he started rapping. On yeah, it. And it was like, actually good. Was like, like, oh, but, um, but it got to a point, like with my anxiety, I, it's not like 
I'm panicking and like everything's rushing through my brain. It's like nothing's in my brain. It's like test anxiety. It's like, like an empty hallway. <laughs> exactly. I got no, a candle. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's no like no door, <laughs> no room. <laughs> But uh, it's like, no, like whenever I take tests in school, I dropped out. Everybody should drop out if you're watching this. No. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. No. I will strike you. Don't do no. School is very important. It, it is. is. I great. promise you, you'll have way less stress in your life if you stay in school. But um, it's like when I would take a test in school, I would get a, no matter how much I studied, they would put that paper in front of me. I would read a question and be like, I've never done math. I've never done science before. Like, I don't know what these words mean. Yeah. So it was like that all over again when we were practicing. And I was like, what story am I about to tell? Like, and so then I started panicking. I was like, what if this happens when yeah. we go on stage, I, those bright lights are on us. I have a microphone in my hand and hundreds of people are just like this staring quiet. So, oh God. Oh, that was, was the like <laughs> driving fear of like, we have to be perfect. We have to kill this. So we, we ended up getting it right, but I didn't even tell you Kim, but after we got it perfect, like the last one, I was like, I'm not confident. I didn't want to tell you that, but I was, I was, I was like, Bro, we're about to kill it. Like it's gonna I be know, great. bro. But I was like, dude, like it means so much to me because like if, who we were doing it for too. So I was like, I I want to do well in front of them. Yeah. And I want like to do well for you and then for the people in the audience. So I was like, fuck, there's so much writing on this. So I was not confident. Um, we end up going back to the to the apartment. We chill a little bit. We watch Love Is Blind. Cam starts crying. Okay, <laughs> it's. It was actually, it was a, we might, he might send that in the Discord. He might put it in the Discord. Yeah, I'll put it in the Discord. But for whatever, so Love is Blind, if you don't know it, whatever, it's a show, they meet people, whatever, blah, 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 love show, uh, without seeing each other. That's the whole concept of it. But season three was recorded in Dallas. It was all Dallas natives. And we finally get to the end of like the wedding scenes. What, like, what is he doing? We get to the end of the wedding scenes and they're going through the weddings and whatnot. And the first one was really emotional. And it just, rem like... I wasn't crying because of the show. Eh. I was crying because when they started crying in that certain they moment, get the wedding, yeah. I immediately just thought back to when like I was shedding a tear with Peyton. I was shedding a tear with Ryan. I was shedding a tear with all of my super close friends, all of my family, with Olivia, like everyone. And it was it, it just <laughs> I was like, what is happening? I literally was like, what is like why am I, why is a tear coming down like my face right now? I was now? like, we're about to go perform. And Kim. he literally just turns around and just starts recording me and I'm like, all right, asshole. Like it was it just it just reminded me like brought me back to my wedding cuz it was such a beautiful and like amazing once in a lifetime just day and it it was really weird. It was like I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know why. No, it was funny. I'll put that in the Discord. But so then it was time to go to the show. Boy, the sweats were sweating. And it's cold. It was like 35 degrees yeah. outside, and I was still like profusely sweating. I was anxiety. Socks, bro. I can't <laughs> the socks are like I black. Stop looking it's like it. somebody just drew a sharpie. It's sick. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's dirty. But um, so we drive to the show. I'm surprised we made that show safe. I do not remember driving. Dude, uh, <laughs> you, we almost did. You were literally like swerving and stuff. I was so and that car, there was a car that cut, completely cut us off. No <laughs> horn, nothing from Peyton. He was just like, he was just like blank. And honestly, it makes sense now because like now that you're saying this, like he was just blank. Lives lives in the backseat. Like, oh my god, what is this guy doing? I was literally like just he was deadpan. Like, no expression like I, there was music playing don't know what song was going yeah, on I, ooh, I couldn't tell you the music. i was so you were doing that and i was just like kind of rehearsing in my head i was like go to this right. story say that right. yeah. yeah but uh we get to the venue i called julian if you don't, if you're a fan of new roaring mall you know who julian is i called julian hey we're at the we're at the venue and it was cool this is our first time like actually like feeling important in a venue because we pulled up and there's like parking people for like take pay for parking at the parking lot and i was like we're on the flyer can we go in and they're oh, like oh yes, yeah 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 go 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 and so this is our first time ever experiencing anything like that we've been to different events but we just kind of you know got to make shit shake but uh we park we go through this little tunnel we meet julian we go to the green room we get it we get a green room it was fucking cool yeah. uh Ju we talked to julian for a while we have our photographer levi we got cam's wife miss olivia mama live and we're just chilling there. Julian's like, can I get you anything? And I was like, alcohol, please. <laughs> I just needed, I just needed like some liquid courage. Like not to get like whatever, but just to calm the nerves. But just yeah. like, just drop the heart rate. Yeah, me. drop the, cause boy, that thing was His stomping. was about 136. The leg was like this. I was like this in the green room, just shaking. <clears throat> um, and we're sitting there talking. We rehearse one more time. 
in the green room. So we're expecting to go on at what time? The original seven? It was originally um, eight. It was originally eight. No, no, before. Oh, yeah, eight, yeah, eight, yeah, eight, yeah, yeah, eight, eight. We got there at like 6.45. Yeah. Expecting to go on at eight. So then it, the whole buildup keeps happening, and we're like, just, I mean, we're not like, like, yes, he's being funny and serious, but we're not sitting there like. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, hiding we're, it we're the just, best I can. We're just chilling. Like, we're chilling in our green room, hanging out, having a few drinks, and then it's just like, all right, well, shoot, 7.15, 45 minutes. Yeah. So it's just. 7.30. We got 30 minutes left. With every, like, increment of time, yeah. we're just like, it's coming, bro. So we hit 7.45, and I'm like, all right, we should, like, you know, I'm going to take a piss. Yeah. Get ready. Do our last couple things. So then we're like, yeah, we, like. Now we're like we're staying like we're it's like it felt like, like before a basketball like game going through the legs whatnot you got the good butterflies and we're like I I cannot sit anymore yeah so we start not pacing but there's like this big open kind of just space uh, <laughs> that was like behind the curtains and everyone like all the audiences out there so we go and we start peeking a little bit and we're like okay that's you know that's pretty that's kind of thick yeah it's decent not, amount it's people. not that bad though like it's not terrible but it's a decent amount so we're sitting there getting hype. And Julian comes from the back hallway, from uh, the stage, comes down and tells us, he's like, hey, uh, we're, we're going to push y'all back a little bit, probably like 15, 20 more minutes. Uh, we're going to let it get more filled. It's, it's over halfway right now, but we're going to let it get more filled. We're like, And we're like, uh, you mean uh, more, more people? people? <laughs> so more people we have to make laugh and enjoy this? So this uh, point, all right, Julian. Thanks. Yeah. So he's like, "You'll need anything." I was like, an inhaler, yeah. but um, <laughs> and then so at this point, I told Cam, I was like, "I got to take a lap. I got to run." And so I was literally like running around that little ballroom or whatever. And then Levi was like, "Let me get some candles." I was like, "Levi, I can't. I can't." Like our photographer is taking pictures and stuff. So Sick I was just pictures too. Great. I cannot wait. They're gonna be on at PSHA and on Cameron's Instagram, and they will be all linked below. But did you just call me Cameron? God, I <laughs> you just called me Cameron. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> you just got a demerit. That's don't touch me. That's sick, Peyton. That's sick, <laughs> Cameron. Cameron Kennedy. Uh, uh, PSHA Cam Kennedy twenty two. Yeah. So uh, then we got to a point, and this is like, so we were expecting to go to go on. So now the anxiety for me at least has built more. I'm like, now I got to sit in this even longer. Every five minutes, I'm checking behind the curtains. Like, oh my oh, god, there's I getting just, more people. I was checking the curtains in my clock. CNC. Yes, I was like, like "Fuck." I was like, okay, there three more rows completely full. More time. All right, ten minutes. And so two more rows. Six minutes. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's we we left some parts out. We talked to Peach a little bit about the podcast, and then we talked to Rory and Maul backstage, and they were so cool to us. They we, were. we talk about Austin. We talk about Texas. We talk about the podcast. Um, just like little inside jokes, and it, they were really cool to us. And um, it felt and th one thing that really like made my heart like happy is because they did a meet and greet before all this so they were doing a meet and greet of people who bought those packages and they're like uh, we're telling where the openers whatever and he was like yeah man during the meet and greet some people said that uh y'all were funny they're looking forward to seeing y'all so yeah. i was like what they're was, telling y'all about us yeah insane yeah that's what Pete, like when he said um when Pete said he was like, yeah, a couple of our other shows, like this isn't discrediting anybody. But he was like, a couple of our other shows, like no one really knew the opening act. And yeah. like it was like a, a really centralized local podcast. And they he was like, there's some fans out there saying to like, like, yeah, y'all are from Dallas, but it's not just a Dallas only. Yeah. We were like, oh, no. Yeah, it's like it's spread out yeah. a little bit. And he was like, yeah, that's dope. Like in the fact that uh, y'all just hit a million, like that's that's an insane milestone. He yeah. was like, no other really opening act is at that yet and we were just like so that immediately like more confident do we still have nerves yes were they good nerves yes but it was just like it was like bro to be honest if this crowd paid money to come see Rory Mall and we don't deliver to them it's like all right because we already had the main guys tell us that we're like yeah on the right path doing the right thing that people say we're funny all that stuff so it's like we were already like, all right, win number one, check, check box. Uh, like, it's, we're good. So we were, it was just so surreal. I, I literally, I told Roy and Maul this, but in 2018 or 2019, I bought a VIP package to do a meet and greet with them. It was like $110 and they had no idea who I was. This is like, I put out like one podcast at this point. So I had like 35 subscribers. So no reason for anybody to know. Um, and so... I bought a VIP package to meet and greet with them and I didn't, it was like a life, like it was like, oh my God, like this is cool. And now 
I get to open them with my best friend. So it was just like a, a, a full circle moment. It was so crazy that I was backstage talking to them. And then now it's time for the show. Yeah, dude, I'm not going to lie. Like, we're sitting there like, okay, it's like five, like three, four, five minutes left. And then Julian, like, it's quiet. It's just us two, Levi, <laughs> taking no. the pics. Julian just busts out the hallway. All right, hey, y'all ready? I'm about to do the intro and hand you the mics and you're on. We're, we're like, like, oh, oh my God. shit. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> So we go up to the stage. We're sitting in the stairwell just holding the mics. And Julian's out there, you know, d describing it to some people that might not know. We come to these cities. We allow opening acts from local podcasts and whatnot. And, uh, but apparently these guys, you know, some of y'all already know who they are. And they're not too local. And they just hit a million. And then when he said they just hit a million on TikTok, there was like an audible, like, like applaud. Uh, yeah. And I was like, I was like another, little, another little check mark. I was like, okay, I'm like. Am I still nervous? Of course. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, I'm already feeling more confident because if you go out, just imagine if you go out, I don't know how many people that were there. I'd say like 150 to 200. I'd say like yeah. around 200, yeah. give or take. Could be more, could be less. Around 200. Imagine if you went out in front of 200 people and no one knew you at all. Or if you went out in front of 200 people and they're already like, there's already a little buzz. There's already been hype from the main pod talking about it. There's already been people talking about it at the meet and greet. And it's like they're kind of anticipating yeah, it. Yeah, they want to so see what are these people about. In a, in a weird way, it added more nerves because it's like, well, since they do know us, like now we really, Got to deliver. We really have to deliver. Because, yeah. again, if it was complete randoms that never known us and they hated it, it's like there is no we expectation. Can't, we can't control that because they don't know who you are. We, they didn't come for us. Yeah. So there's no expectation. Exactly. But the fact that there was already like some anticipation built up it added confidence, but more nerves at the same time. But it was like, dude, we can really like, let's go do this. Yeah. And his intro, for whatever reason, I thought it was going to be a little longer. Me it too. Was like, it was like, he said his stuff. Get your ass up on he threw like one or two jokes. And then he literally was like, all right, this is them. And yeah. I was like, <laughs> and so at that point, like all the nerves, like every feeling I had in my body, it was like, I wasn't inside of me. Anymore. Yeah, it, just, it left. Walking up the stairs to get onto the stage. I was just like, we're doing it. I am literally three steps away from being in front of these spotlights, 200 people on the main <laughs> stage. Like, wow. Yeah, and so we stepped out, and I can't, re like, we just watched back a video that Ashlyn, uh, you know, the whole You Should Know team was there. So shout out to Ashlyn. She recorded our intro, and Back Outside Boys was playing, and yeah. I do not remember that I playing. literally did. I was like, there wasn't music. <laughs> yeah, I could have bet money that there wasn't music. But in, even in the video, I hit a little. <laughs> yeah, we were like this. Like, He's coming out like this. I let me go. So it's like, I guess, guess there was, but it. I literally, we didn't hear anything. And That's how just, like, locked in we were. But... I don't know about you, but I can say, like, my little testimony real quick. Yeah. When we walk out there, immediately, I'm not going to lie, I didn't think it would be, like, the term getting under the bright lights or whatever, like, afraid, like they were incredibly bright. <laughs> I could which not is, see like, It's a good thing, thing because you can't see everyone you're talking to, but at the same time, I was like, they can see <laughs> everything about me. Like, if there's a drop of sweat, <laughs> if I burp, if I mess up one word, they're seeing everything. everything. And that's the first thing that came, because I was like, they are unbelievably bright like because we genuinely like genuinely probably couldn't see past like the third or fourth row shit for me i couldn't see past the first i literally could not see i could shit. see i could, I could make I, I was making eye contact with everybody in the first but yeah like, to keep moving to other people yeah. in the crowd it's like I, I really was just like staring at, at silhouettes yeah. like i couldn't really tell who you are what you look like we did a, a good job of like hitting every part of the audience and like and stage and control like sta we were moving that, from was, both that sides. was one thing i was afraid that in the in the uh, moment that we would get not like awkward but just like stationary yeah but we were we were just moving back and forth hand in the pocket hand out using cool. like we weren't doing our normal thing which is sitting and talk because like there was a couch and a table and then an, actually another like they brought out a high top table with two chairs for as us if, to like sit. we were to sit in it and dude we were just rocking it like yeah. we were just like, walking we're gonna try to own this stage while we have it engaging with them and it, and it was it was dope and so when we got out we were anticipating to come out to crickets right because yeah you know it's a they have no reason to like give us love. They don't know. It's like, show me something. It's what we were expecting. But we got out, and there were some people that clapped for us. But then we said, no, nah, like, y'all can interact. Like, you don't know us, but come on. It's, yeah. Don't be afraid. And then they, were, they just it, went they just crazy. They just went crazy. And then so and, we told the first story, and this is where I was nervous because I was like, I, I didn't even have to think about the – anytime we rehearsed, I was thinking about the jokes and, like, this – okay, I'm going to hit this joke, and I'm, I got to do it like this or whatever. It was just like – it came like it yeah. just happened it was supernatural and that it, that's just like another uh 
like point to preach like whatever you're doing it's like practice makes perfect like for real like if we like you can go up there and there's some people that really thrive under like off the dome stuff yeah and like but this being our first time we didn't want to go in there just completely naked so we were like you know let's let's practice a little bit and then once we got out there it was just like not to toot our own horn but dude it was like it was flawless i couldn't imagine it going any better like i think i had one little i said one word weird but i immediately covered it like i said something i think when i was talking about the app on your phone i was like we got the black app black jack app oh i didn't even hear it yeah and and it was so quick no one laughed and there's nothing yeah it was just like but it was just an amazing feeling because like all these people that hadn't and again there's some that had seen us and known us and stuff but like all the jokes were landing it was live there's no time to watch like there's no editing behind it yeah there's no you can't be like oh shit let's do that like you know yeah like there's no little there's it's not a screen it's like they are looking at us human to human in the flesh and the jokes were landing people were engaging with us like genuine laughter yeah we literally made the crowd a part of our show which we didn't even intend to like yeah. we just started riffing off each other because yeah. you know our chemistry is great and we just started riffing off each other and then got the crowd involved in like our inside jokes and they they liked it yeah it was it was awesome though like it was it was it, such an experience and so at the end of it i basically i, I ended it by saying thank you and told them the story i just told y'all about rory and maul mean so much and they like there was a big pop like I, yeah. they like in the middle of me like saying it they were doing this i was like okay cool like yeah. this is great it wasn't an awkward ending me and cam got off the stage and as soon as we got off the stage there was somebody backstage and they were like that was funny as hell and then i was like oh okay and then me and cam dude yeah lost we it. were back to the green room we were just like ah! <laughs> yeah like we did that like it was it was a great good moment. old dude, hug it was, it was a great night like it was just awesome it, it was, was so fulfilling that it went good like even if it wouldn't have went good we still would again had each other's backs still yep. been proud of each other but like that's just a cherry on top that um like inspiration for the pod being there who we're doing it for first live show in hometown like all that stuff all these little layers of stuff that's like it was awesome but then just again cherry on top was the fact that everyone liked it and it was just it was great yeah and then so to we watched the whole Royer and Mall show. They put Hilarious. on a great show. Hilarious. Shout out to them. Um, then we went backstage because, like, all right, let's try to take a picture with Rory and Mall or whatever. But then Rory and Mall started doing like a second meet and greet with everybody that was in the audience. So we were like, damn, let's just go out on the stage and like just wait for them. Also, B. Simone, I don't know if y'all know who B. Simone is. She's hilarious, very talented, beautiful uh, comedian, actress, everything. Yeah, uh, comedian, actress, CEO, like everything. She's everything. She's yeah. just like a, a amazing human. She was a surprise guest for the Rory and Maul show. She she showed up and did stuff with them. And so when we got on the stage after the show, waiting for Rory and Maul, B Simone and her co-host, I, I'm so sorry, I forgot her Megan. name. Megan. Megan. They were right on the stage with us. Now people were taking pictures with Rory, Maul, B Simone. We we're just kind of standing there, like we weren't expecting to take pictures with anybody. Yeah. We were just standing there waiting, waiting for like to get a picture with Rory and Maul. Then all of a sudden, somebody comes up to us. Hey, are, are y'all doing pictures too? We are like, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah of, we of course. Doing. So, and we're not even like, he said on the stage, but like imagine this is the stage. We're like side stage. right here, side and behind it. Yeah. So like the lights aren't on us. We're not in the middle. We're like ducked to the far left of it and behind the lights. Yeah. But they saw us. Hey, can you take a picture? So of course we're not going to take a picture in the in pitch black. Yeah. So we cr- that's when we crept onto the stage because again we weren't trying to take anything away from B because B Simone was right in the middle of the light taking her pictures. Rory and Maul were split at the bottom right in front of the light. So we're like not trying to no. be invasive at all. But I'm like, I mean it's got to be a good picture. Like they yeah. asked for a picture, so at least let's get in front of the light a little bit. So we get in front of the light, and then it was just like routine. We were part of the People meeting right now. Rory Maul, B Simone, us. Rory Maul, B Simone, us. And like me and were like. Are we supposed to be doing yeah, it? Yeah, and then and then um, it was crazy. And then one fan was at the bottom, and she couldn't get up to the stage. She was like, can I please get a picture? I really, really want one. We were like, yeah. So we went down to her. So then we ended up like in, in the, the middle, middle of, Rory. of Rory and Maul, and people just kept flooding us. And I was like, dude, this is fantastic, but I just don't. We got to go back. Yeah, I was like, I just, I don't know. Something's telling me this isn't like where we're supposed to be, but it was great, and we loved taking pictures with all y'all. Yeah, so it was we amazing. We posted it. We reposted it. Um, uh, afterwards but yeah it was it was awesome and the final cherry on top for the night is we go back on the stage and we're like let's just let's take a picture with b simone and and megan 
And so they were shooting something. I think they had like a BTS camera or whatever. They, they had their video, videographer say that one in English. They they were doing like some dance. They were having fun. And I was just trying to, it was, was, was double like, dutch. Was like, I was trying to get in. And so, like yeah, baby, baby boy. boy. And so I lock eyes with B. Simone. And she goes, oh, and she thinks we're she fans. She thinks we're in the line. So I quickly was like, not again. Not, we are no, fans of them. Yeah. But I was like. Cause, so they showed up later, like, but they didn't. They, they didn't, didn't see, see us. They weren't here. They weren't in. They didn't have a green room. They they showed up later. So we walk up, and he like he gets his foot in finally, and they're like, "Oh, you want a picture for sure?" We're like, "Yes, we'd love to." But I was like, "Uh, quickly though, real quick. I know y'all showed up late, but uh, and you didn't really get to see us. But we were the we were the ones that opened for Rory and Maul." And she was like, "Oh, for real?" She was yeah. Like, she was like, "Oh, oh my goodness." Da, 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 she was what, asking like, questions. What do y'all do? We we're like, well, a podcast. She's like, okay, what is it about? And we're like, yeah, that was one of our bits. Uh, <laughs> nothing. Nothing, really, but uh, just stories and our life experiences, just sharing them with each other and, and with the world. And she's like, oh, that's awesome. Like, how's and it going and everything? And we're like, yeah, it's, I mean, it's pretty good. Just, just hit a million yeah, followers on TikTok. on TikTok. And right when we said that, it's like it clicked in her brain. She's like, okay, they're on TikTok. And you could see, like, the cogs the issue is And she literally goes, oh, a million. Oh. Helen Keller. And we were like. We were like, No way i was it, like wow and not even that she said she she saw it today that day the we helen keller video, video like months ago two two and a half one and a half two months ago yeah and she said it popped up on her for you page that same day yeah and, and it was just like wow and then she she was like oh y'all are so funny you dumb <laughs> yeah she called me dumb. i was like all right b thank you but no they were they were super friendly like b simone and megan were awesome and uh we got our picture with them They'll all be on the Instagram later. Yeah. Whenever we get all the pictures back, like we'll definitely post them. But it was just all in all an awesome night. We went back to the green room, let all of them take uh, their final meet and greets. And then Rory Maul, Megan, B. Simone, they all came backstage. We got more pictures. And then we they, they gave us great insight. Rory yeah, gave Rory us gave insight and like tips on the stuff. They said we killed it for they were like, oh, that's that was really, really good for a first live show ever. Like, you know, awesome and do this and that next time and keep trying to do this and like mm -hmm. just great insight, tips, just being a sponge, soaking up all the advice, and it was just, it was awesome. Like, yeah. all in all, fantastic so, night. So, to in that, thank you to the whole new Rory and Maul team. Thank you to Rory and Maul. Thank you to everybody in the audience that didn't boo us off the stage. Yeah, that was literally real. a dream come true. I, we, I cried when I got back home. We said, we said that at the end. We were like, we were like, our number one thing was just make sure y'all did not boo us off to at least enjoy these 25 minutes yeah. and not boo us off. So I'm glad that happened. They were like, yeah. Yeah, it was so cool, so it was, man. It was awesome. It was so cool. It was that literally like a memory I will never forget. Yeah. Life-changing, like For sure. a core memory. We're going to look back on this like, for a while uh, oh my god while, like forever yeah and so in saying that i have a bug now <laughs> i have a live show bug <laughs> i that feeling of being able to not just do this over the screen and like actually put names to faces and meet y'all and hear y'all's reactions in real time to the Ooh, stories so <laughs> so um we were talking to julian mm -hmm. and we do plan on doing another live show now we don't have a any specifics any details but we do plan on going to new york we do plan on going to new york and do dun, so dun, dun. to the to the new york fans i know there's a lot of y'all out there prepare in the bodegas with the ox <laughs> yeah prepare for a live show we're hoping for summertime yeah no clue on timeline it's just super penciled in like just throwing it out there for y'all, though. But, no, I don't even know if I should say this. Ideally, the next live show, which will be a lot sooner, will be in Austin, Texas. Not saying what event, not saying anything, and it has not been confirmed at all. So hopefully, Austin coming up here not too long. So, um, and there will be ample time for y'all to get tickets yeah, and it stuff. Won't be, it, it won't, won't be, be... You won't hear about it on a Thursday and it's happening Saturday. Yeah, you'll be ample time, and so we can't wait... Um, God, that was just uh, such a cool experience. So, thank you. The You Should Know Podcast. All right, it's enough of the of the recaps. Time to get back to the You Should Know Podcast of the, the story times. You know, that's why y'all love us, the story times. I think I went on the most embarrassing date of all time. Oh, my God. I don't, I, I just, I can't even, I cannot fathom the fact that you have not told me which one it is. I probably already know it, but 
I can't fathom that you have more of these insane moments. I, I completely understand it because you are you, but dear God. So in college, my freshman year of college, there was an upperclassman. She was a junior or a senior. She was an older woman, and she was so beautiful. I had such a big crush on her, and you actually knew her. So I told you to, you know, put in a good word for me. You know, say something about me. See if she likes me. A little wingman, a little yeah. cupid. Yeah, go see what the vibes are. See if she's feeling Peyton back. You came back to me, and you are like, Peyton? Absolutely not. She wants no parts of you. She says you're too young. You're a little boy. A little creepy. A little, yeah, a little creepy. Still dressing like a druid, but you're too skinny. You're like a little skeleton yeah, your boy. Fingers are too stiff, and uh, <laughs> you sweat a lot. Yeah. Uh, no go, buddy. So I was like, I like this woman way too much to just give up now. I'm going to just try to court her, give her compliments every time I see her. So a couple months go by, and she finally gives in and says, Peyton, you know what? Let's go on a date. Yes! Yeah, it was like a sympathy, like a sick little dog that you don't really want to take in, but you're like, man, should I feed this dog? And just So she, she finally gave enough sympathy, and she's like, yeah, I'll do it, I guess. So, Whatever. So I was preparing. I took two showers that night. I was feeling real good. I was going to take her out to go eat. Now, I was a freshman in college, dead broke, no oh, yeah. money. None. But I saved up a little coinage to be able to take her out on a date to McDonald's <laughs> you know, we, we go to this restaurant so we drive to this restaurant we're having good conversation in the car she's liking the music I'm playing vibes are immaculate I'm like oh this is going well this is gonna be my wife here in about a week and a half <laughs> so we get to the dinner we're eating the dinner good cuisine good talks good I'm, McChickens oh yeah. good. <laughs> it was like probably chilies or something <laughs> but we're having good cuisine good talks the dinner's over. Time for the waiter to bring the bill. As oh, Lord. No problem. I've been saving up money yep, for this. I got the coinage. I have the means to do this once. <laughs> so, waiter puts the bill on the table. I grab it immediately. Gentlemen, I'm going to pay for this. Don't worry. I got that guap. She didn't know that. She probably knew I was broke. Yeah. So, we all did. I look at the bill, whew, hurt the chest a little bit, but I had to put on a poker face because I wanted to impress this woman that I've had a crush on for a quarter century. Mm, hurt the chest, that Chili's is sick. I didn't know we were down bad. I didn't want to do the two for 25 because I didn't want her to know I was broke. Get whatever you want, just not the ribs. Stop ordering the margaritas. That's enough. I was like, are you sure you want the chips yeah. and dip? I think you're feeling it. You're, you're, you're good. So I see the bill. I go to grab my wallet. Oh, I'm God. reaching around. I'm like, oh, no. No wallet. Oh, no. In the pocket. I'm like, oh, God. Oh, I'm no. panicking. She goes, what's wrong? I go, oh, nothing, nothing. I think, uh, I think I left my wallet in my car. Let me go grab that. Yeah. I thought there was a chance that I left my wallet in the car. I might have slipped out of the pockets. I got loose pockets. Yeah, genuine with the big pockets. Real big clothing. <laughs> Hide that body. <laughs> Easily could have slipped out of that 3XL pocket. <laughs> I do wear big clothes. <laughs> We're big people. It doesn't matter. So, so I go to my car. I'm like, okay, it's somewhere in here. I look, you know, in the car, there's like that dungeon right beside the middle yeah. console in the seat. I'm going in there. I'm cutting up my hand <laughs> trying to find it. No wallet inside. I'm opening every crevice and door and I'm flipping stuff over. I'm like, my wallet has to be in here somewhere. I have no wallet in the car. I'm like, oh, oh God. my God. I brought no money to this date for this woman that I have such a big crush on. She finally gave me a chance. No wallet. Oh. But then I remember my mom always put an emergency fund in the glove compartment. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, my God, Mama Harden, thank <laughs> Has you. Has saved my soon-to-be week-and-a-half marriage. Yes. I still have a chance. She always put three $20 bills in there, and that was for emergencies only. Like if you're... This you, is an emergency. This is code red. I'm about to call the SWAT team. We need to get some kind of savior here. So I grabbed that $60. I'm like, thank God I'm be able to pay in cash. I go back into the restaurant. I sit down on the table and I look. The bill is gone. My date is just looking at me like this. I'm like, uh, where'd the bill go? She goes, oh, don't worry. I already paid for it. Oh, oh, oh. 
Oh, I'm like, you, you, you did what? Already paid? F- oh, God. Am I walking home? <laughs> Are you taking my car, too? I was like, what do you mean you already paid for it? I just, I left my wallet in my car, and she goes, did you leave your wallet in your car? And I'm like, oh. Yeah, I oh, left the wallet in the car. Oh, God, she knew. She's pressing you. And so I go, and I'm to show her that I actually have the money, I pulled the three $20 bills out of my pocket. I'm like, look. And she goes, that's an emergency fund your mom left you, isn't it? Like, all right, who, okay, um, you wizard, all right, you sage, what do you have, a ball in the background, you just, your mystical ball, you knew this was happening? And I go, what? No, no, and she goes, don't worry, my mom used to do that for me when I was a kid, too. Oh, shit! <laughs> uh, uh, Damn! <laughs> Shots fired, local Chili's restaurant. <laughs> oh, my God. I damn near it was like that one single tear started rolling down my cheek and I was like no 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 I'm so oh. sorry like I, I I just forgot the wallet I was nervous local chill is out of business after a homicide inside the building <laughs> we'll be back to you with the news and oh my god and I mean that is just that's brutal like I go no oh, I go well I don't want you to pay for it so you're here just take this and she goes I don't need your money it's like I don't want to pee here anymore oh my god you, you are that little sick, little weak, just rib cage showing dog on the side of the road at this point. Oh my God. There's, if there's any dignity, any pride left in you, she just, just shot right. It was like, oh, that hurts. I was, that hurts me. I Good was, Lord. I was empty after that. It's like, I was like stumbling back to the car. I was like, I feel nothing. Anymore. You're like, you go, you can have the ox to- Oh, it's safe to good. say we didn't go on a second date and fast forward to 2022 she's now married to an nfl player <laughs> she doesn't Money's have, not an issue there buddy <laughs> she never has to worry she about a man she doesn't she probably has, oh, oh God. she'll, you, she'll oh. probably never touch a chili's again oh either. no she's eating ruth crisp oh my <laughs> god but um that's very sa- matter of fact i have a story about oh god me with a wallet with a wallet situation <laughs> So, this is how I got fired from Kroger. What's Kroger? For the people that don't know. I was about to slap you. I was seriously going to give you a bent knuckle, just one bent knuckle backhand right to your cheek. But for the people that don't know, what's Kroger? Kroger is a grocery store. of, of Not like a little whatever one. It's like a full-blown grocery store, like your Walmarts, Targets, stuff like that. So, Kroger, big old grocery store. This is like my second job I ever had. How old are you? So I was probably 16. Okay. I'm a courtesy clerk. So basically, I'm doing one of three things every day I'm on the shift. Stocking shelves, getting carts from outside, putting them back in the cart barn, or bagging groceries. Today, this Sunday, <laughs> by the way, if you work at a, at a grocery store, take off Sundays. <laughs> Don't do it. Just save yourself. Everyone and their mom and their mom's dog is buying groceries on Sunday. <laughs> They're getting prepped for the week. Smart thing to do. Don't work. If you're working at Walmart or anything like that, don't do it on a Sunday. Take them off. Anyway, so I'm working on the Sunday, and I'm bagging groceries. So it's like 30 minutes straight of just bagging groceries, which doesn't sound like a lot, but I mean, genuinely think about 30 minutes of full-blown carts coming, and you're bagging everything. Into no break. No, like, no break. Chaos. 30 minutes, just constantly. And another huge thing that it doesn't seem that big to other people when you are large individuals, yep. there's certain things that aren't inconveniences to 99% of the population that is like a literal dagger to you. Mm-hmm. This being one of them. The bagging like station was at for like the average height person. Like someone that's 5'10", it's going to be perfect right there yeah. for him. We're 6'7". I'm literally bagging for 30 minutes straight like this. <laughs> like... <laughs> It's, I mean, my back is just shot at this point. So 30 minutes go by. It's a Sunday. There's finally a quick break in the bagging. So, and my friend is the cashier. So my friend's the cashier. I'm the bagger. We're getting a little chemistry going. We finally catch a break. Right. So I'm like, dude, I am like literally my stomach is eating my back. It's already in pain. It's trying to just take it all out for me. It's, I am so hungry. I grab a singular Hershey's cookie and cream chocolate bar and if you don't like that something's wrong with you something needs to be fixed up there but it's phenomenal so i grab it grab the bar grab the wallet literally bar wallet me friend no one else there okay so i'm like 
hey, bro, check me out real quick. I, I, I have to eat this. I cannot wait for my break. So he scans it. I have my wallet. And immediately, a customer comes up to the line. All, anybody that has ever worked any job that is any, literally any sort of customer service, you know customer always comes first. Like no matter what you're doing, no matter what you think you got going, customer comes first. So I'm immediately like, oh, oh yeah, right right here, ma'am. You're completely fine. Yeah, you cut me. Yeah, like complete, like go for it. So he had already scanned the item, so he had to cancel the um, order. So when like at, at Kroger, when you cancel a thing, it prints off a receipt that like this thing was canceled. This item was like this whole transaction has been voided. So it's this little like it's a super small receipt because nothing was bought. So I take that receipt and I'm so like I'm already in I'm past where the candy is. So I'm already in the line. So I take the receipt and I just put it in my pocket, put the candy bar in my pocket, put the wallet in my pocket and I go back to my station. Okay. So she finishes she finishes her order. Okay. Again, another 30 minute, no break. People just start pouring in. So I literally, I'm like, dude, I'm dying. You got that I'm Hershey's go, in your pocket, in my though. pocket. I have the receipt showing that I was about to buy it. I can literally pay for it the next break I get. I open the candy bar. I consume it. Literally, probably two seconds. I literally <laughs> inhaled it. It just went <laughs> vacuum. It's gone. My stomach is now digesting it. There's some sort of relief in me. So I'm still bagging. And all of a sudden... I get called from my manager who's standing over there and she's watching everything. She calls me over. She goes, hey, did you just, did you just eat something? I was like, yeah, I, I ate a Hershey's cookies and cream candy bar. She's like, oh, okay, I, I thought you, I just, it, I thought you did. It just looked weird. And I was like, all right. Yeah. Uh, Never seen somebody eat? Yeah. Can I go bag or <laughs> she's like, yeah, yeah, go. Go back to bagging again. Sunday, stupid busy. Bagging, bagging, bagging. I get called over the PA system in Kroger. <laughs> like you're a lost child? Yeah, like, I, where's this person's mom? Uh, can we please have Cameron to the uh, office? Can we, uh, once again, that's Cameron to the office. So I'm like, um, God? okay. God? <laughs> so, yeah, uh, sure. Is there another Cameron that I didn't know worked here? So I have to abandon my station. I go in the back, go up the stairs, and I go to her office. And she's sitting there. She goes, please have a seat. And immediately I'm like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. Like, wh why am I being interrogated? Yeah. So I sit down and she goes, um, this is, this is really unfortunate. And you know, it kind of hurts me, but, uh, that's, that was theft and, and we're going to have to fire you. What are you saying to me right now? I said, hurts you my ass. You, you had a smirk when you said that <laughs> you're firing me right now in the middle of my shift. <laughs> What are you saying to me? What am I hearing? What did I just hear? She goes, yeah, and, and, and actually, um, due to the handbook, it's, it's not a normal fire. It's, it's actually going to be a termination, and you can't work for Kroger ever again. <laughs> You're on a most wanted list for Hershey's. I got a most a dead or alive 50K poster of my face in a chocolate bar slapped on the wall. What are you saying? Why am I terminated? Why am I jobless now? And she goes... You took on the, sh on the clock, you took product, consumed it, and you didn't pay for it. Um, by definition, in our, in our handbook, that's theft. And I was like, okay. So I'm like, but this is the receipt showing it had already been scanned on a scanner that I was about to pay for it. And, and me, like, one thing about me, if I get backed in a corner or a, a situation I don't agree with, like, I'm not going out sad. Mm -hmm. I'm going to defend myself. So I'm like, here's the receipt showing I wanted to buy it at the exact time. And if you look at the cameras, you can see my wallet in my hand. There was another wave of people coming in. So I was taught by y'all that customers are always first. So I simply went back and I was very hungry. So I just ate it. I had all the intentions in the world of buying that candy bar. You can even go ask said friend who's working. See, I, I hear what you're saying, but it's just, it's theft. She was not You've playing. been terminated. So... Um, could you please take your badge off? And I'm like, is th is this like undercover? But what are you? Are you testing me? Are you really like promoting me? And this is like a yeah. test. How do I react to it? So I'm I'm sitting here just distraught. And I'm like, are you're serious right now? She's like, oh yes, um, very serious. And actually, um, here's a page. Do you mind writing in most detail as possible, filling up the entire page of on the incident? She wants you to fill out an essay. I said is. Is this the SAT? What do you what What do you mean? She goes, could you please be descriptive uh, for your side of the story for our books? So in case just anything were to happen, and I said, is this changing the fact that I'm terminated? 
Well, unfortunately, no, but it's just for our end. I said, I'm not writing your damn essay. Yeah, said, Take your paper yeah, back, I Michelle. Said, I'm, not, I'm literally not doing this. You have already fired me, terminated. Take your essay back. I'm not writing anything. She's like, are you sure you want to do that? Am I sure? I want to burn this building to the ground right now. Am I sure I want to skip an essay without being reinstated to my position? Yeah, I think I'm sure on it. Have your paper. So then she... I kid, I am a 16 year old boy. I kid you not. She literally doubles down and goes, okay, well, um, since you are no longer here and terminated, we're going to have to ask you to leave the premises immediately. I'm like, are you TSA? Like, this is Kroger. What, what is going, what is happening? You have, t you have a Teflar, you have a vest on? Where's your gun? What is happening? Like, why, what is going on? And she, so I go down there and I'm literally like, Yo, what is, so I call my mom, I'm like, I just got fired, what do you want me, because I don't have a car at this time, I'm like, and she's at work, I'm like, I don't know, like, what do you want me to do? How am I going to get home? And she goes, uh, I'll leave, I, I can come get you, what even happened? I was like, I'm just, I'm too upset, I don't want to even, like, I just, just, I'll be waiting up here. So I, I'm not going to go stand in the heat, so I'm staying in the front, you know, a grocery store, like, right when you open in those little front rooms, Yeah. I'm just, sta literally just standing there yeah. on my phone. Yeah. This woman has a vendetta against me at this point. She comes out and goes, you have to get off the premises. I said, and at this point, I'm just, I'm completely ticked yeah. off. Like, I'm not hearing anything you're saying. So I go, I'm not going outside and getting a sunburn while I'm waiting on my ride. I, I don't have a car. I'm not walking home. I'm not doing that. She goes, okay, unfortunately, we're going to have to call law enforcement. I said, oh, I, said my God. I was like, what is wrong with you? Like, what What bed did you wake up on the wrong side? Someone pissed in your cornflakes this morning, and you think you have power to take it out on a 16-year-old for eating a 89-cent a chocolate bar? What the hell is wrong with you? And so basically, at that point when she said that, I lost it. I can't even lie. I, my mom wasn't too proud of me in the moment, but again, defending myself, I didn't know what else to do. So I'm like, you know what? Call the cops. I'm not like, I, I just went, I, I, it was a full blown roid rage. I don't know what was inside, but I was like, call the cops. I'm not going anywhere. I'm like, and it was just, it was, it wasn't my brightest moment, but it was unbelievable. That's and insane. I literally was terminated from Kroger for a candy bar that I had all intents and purposes buying like that. I wanted and to almost buy. arrested, almost like kicked off the premises, law enforcement called. I'm like, it's just what are you doing? That's insane. I didn't. It's, I did not know that story. It's ridiculous. That's crazy. It's ridiculous. Yeah, shop at Walmart. <laughs> Don't go to Kroger. That's that's fucking hilarious. Oh my god. Uh, oh shit. Great podcast. Yeah. Great it was, podcast. It was fantastic. Uh, again, we will have all the info in the weeks, months, years, decades coming. <laughs> About what? Just future events, live shows, <laughs> live that? shows, everything. live like, shows. Basically, I'm saying it's in the works, but don't expect a timestamp anytime soon. Don't expect anything to be pinned in or sharpied. It's all in pencil. Yeah, got to work out a ton. Just of stuff. follow but us. You will know. Yeah, follow us on Instagram. Be in the Discord if you actually are a fan of the podcast. Be be in the Discord. <laughs> um, we'll have all the announcements in there. Um, guys, thank you so much. Next week, I know we spent a lot of this episode talking about the live show but it was such a monumental moment and i hope you're happy for us and uh, that's why we took so much time talking about it because it's such a monumental moment for us we just came off the stage it feels like 20 minutes ago like yeah, it's crazy <laughs> um guys i'm so nervous to do the shoe flip because my sock um, oh yeah if you can look at a sock take a peek <laughs> don't screenshot it please please screenshot it. Um, pause at the perfect frame guys thank you so much everything you ever want answered is going to be in the description below follow us on instagram at psh8 at cam kennedy 22 Two, shit. It's all in the description. Yeah, uh, remember, one out of ten koala bears don't make home to Christmas. Thank you to Manscaped. I love you, and I'll see you all next week. Black Friday ten is the secret code. Black Friday ten. Black Friday ten is the secret code, and it's going to be the discount code on BF10. Thanksgiving. Make it short again. Yeah, BF10. The casuals. BF10. BF10. We love you so much. We'll see you all next week. Have a very, very happy and amazing Thanksgiving. Spend time with your loved ones. We're going to talk to them after, but uh, again. Nope. Yep. This goes out Monday. Thanksgiving is on Thursday. Oh, gobble, gobble then. Yep, gobble, gobble. Eat you some turkey. Uh, have a great Thanksgiving. Season your chicken. Uh, you, should, <laughs> you should know studios.com slash backshop Black Friday. Do what? all your Black Friday shopping. What? Say that again? You should know studios.com backslash. Back <laughs>
<laughs> Usenosideos.com backslash shop uh, Black Friday. Get all the good old deals. Uh, and get into the win. We some. love you. Appreciate Enjoy it. family time and a break from work. I, I got a candle and I got a sponge. I live in a hallway with no doors and no rooms. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? We're good. We're good. There we go. Yeah. We're good. We're so funny. We can do some good stuff. Guys, I just want to say, before we do anything, I want to thank the whole New Warrior Mall team for allowing yes, us to do sure. this. This is really thank cool. You. So, yeah, round of applause for them. Thank you. Thank you.